Hey everyone, welcome back to another open studio hour. Um, I'm Jamie Fisher. I am um, art director with Burning Oak Studios and I work here at Jerry's Art of Rama. And so during our open studio, for those of you that are new to this, um, what we do is we just hang out for an hour. Um, you guys get to chill with us and ask us art questions. You can ask us about, you know, anything from what paint you think we should be using in a project to how's the weather here. Everything goes. So today I am working on actually a version of a project I had planned to do when we were in lockdown during COVID. Um, I had this little watermelon guy on this deep canvas and I really love using the deep canvas because I love continuing the image onto the edges. It has a really awesome look to it and really finished and you don't have to frame it and you can just put it up on your wall as it is. Um, so taking this idea I decided I was going to make it bigger and add some drips because I had done this piece a little while ago and so I felt inspired by this one continuing that drip theme theme in here with the watermelons and doing the pop art look with like these thick lines so with this I want to make sure that I get lots of solid color in there and I've already gone down and uh, put in one layer of this Indian yellow and I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the second layer now and then I will continue from there I'm still not really quite sure if I want to do my watermelon slices more natural with more pinks and greens or if I just want to deviate but mostly I've I've stuck with something similar to a watermelon color but we'll see I might change my mind so I'm gonna go into the yellow again And I'm using the Lucas Krill paints, and these are a very soft body acrylic, which is great. It gives me a good amount of working time, and this paint really goes a long way, too. If you're working on large projects, this is great stuff to use. Hey Tim.
get in those extra spots where I went over a little too thin. Normally I really love detailed work, one of my favorite styles. Um, so, you know, Art Nouveau, lots of swirls and details in there, but I love pop art. I love that graphic style because it's so clean. I also love the colors. They're very vibrant. Yeah. We just always want it in the fridge. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't gotten any watermelon yet this season. I think that's another reason why I was deciding to paint it. Deep down, I'm craving watermelon. Except, don't eat your paint. That's, that's not a good idea. This is not edible. Hey Brazen. Hey Frida. We just started. You guys are good. You didn't miss much. I'm just doing a second layer here of this Indian yellow. do I love the Lucas Krill because it goes a long way and it's a great paint that just slides across the canvas it's really easy to just push the paint along um, we're working with acrylic here so you don't have to wait for it to dry like you would you know oils to move on to the next um, color or layer of your painting and so that's nice if you're feeling a bit impatient and really just want to get something down I could pick between cantaloupe or watermelon, but I'm glad you like uh, watermelon more as a color, even though I don't know if we're going with watermelon colors yet. So maybe I should take that back. Sorry. I just asked her if she put salt on her cantaloupe. Oh, yeah. Do you ever do that? My dad has always done it. So we're from the south and it's just like That's a thing. The thing. And it is so much better with salt on it. It's the wildest thing to me. See, okay, I've done it a couple of times and I will say it's very good. I don't like it on watermelon. I've heard people do it on watermelon, but it just brings out like the sweetness, mm -hmm. I think, of the cantaloupe. Yeah. But some people don't like it, so. Well, I like it on watermelon. I just never made it common practice. I don't know why. My mom always did it. That's one of her favorite things, but she puts salt on everything. <laughs> the more that I think about it, as I stand here and paint. It's just funny when you grow up and you're like, these are things that my family has always done. Yeah. And maybe they're not as normal as I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're like, this is perfectly normal to me. <clears throat> oh, you guys didn't eat pears with mayonnaise in them? With mayonnaise? 
That's a thing. No, I did not. It's called. It's a pear salad. Oh. It's uh, also very southern, I believe. Yeah, you get half a pear, put it on your plate, put man a dollop of mayonnaise in it, and then sprinkle it with cheddar cheese. That's wild. Don't knock it till you try it. I'll probably do neither. <laughs> It's actually really good. I can't say that it's good for you. There is this like southern casserole that they have at every family reunion I go to and it is, oh gosh, I think it's like Ritz crackers and pineapple and cheddar Ooh. and it tastes like cake and I don't know why it tastes like cake. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. But it, you tell people about it and they're like, that literally sounds like the grossest thing I've ever heard of. And it is just like, a, it's decadent. Yeah. It's so weird how this like flavors you wouldn't think would go together. So you're like, who did this first? Oh, uh, yeah. And why? <laughs> yeah. That's the big question. Why? Sometimes you don't want to know the why. What happened? Let's see. So I'm almost done with the second layer. I'm telling you, don't knock the pear salad until you try it. It's good. But I may be biased because I've been eating it ever since I was a kid. Ooh, Jen brought up strawberries with black pepper and balsamic. I haven't tried the black pepper, oh. but strawberries and balsamic is my jam. Yeah. I would try that. Maybe after studio hours, we'll. I like to <laughs> roast it with the balsamic. Take a trip glaze on it. Oh. I don't know what it does, but it makes it, I just say it tastes more like a strawberry somehow. <laughs> Intensifies the strawberryness mm -hmm. of the strawberry. Brings it to its best self. <laughs> Strawberries live in their best life. I have never said living your best life before in my life. And there's and new, new things it. for us all today. Yeah, that was a first. Now that I don't know if anybody still says that anymore, do they? Behind the times. <laughs> yeah, art is a good way to get your kids to, to sit still. Especially if you tell them to really get the details in. Once they're finished with their drawing, you can just be like, oh, what if you, what do you think about adding this? Yeah. All right. It's looking good. And then I'll go back and touch up later if I feel the need to once it's dried. Um, let's see. So again, we're using the Lucas Krill um, acrylics. Um, it's a liquid acrylic, flows really great, um, very soft bodied. And it's really nice for using um, on panels and getting nice flat surfaces of color. to make a decision about what my watermelon color is going to be. And I think I am actually going to go just with a solid, solid alizarin crimson. I might make a little bit of a tint. Soften it up a little bit.
I'm gonna go ahead and knock down, knock out this middle one. And where I have my rough outlines is where I'm gonna go back in with my uh, black solid lines to really give it that uh, pop look, pop art look. So I'm not necessarily worried about making every curve perfect and every line straight, just trying to get the color in. And then when I go back with my thick black line, that'll help me clean up the image. I almost wanted to do something a little bit more painterly today because we were just in Chicago and stopped by the Art Institute and there was a Cezanne exhibit. Ooh. Yeah. But pop art is just so fun. I think it's really interesting too. Let's see. like um, Andy Warhol was talking about his artwork and how he wanted to be more like a machine, wanted it to be more mechanical than human-like, being able to bust out uh, replicas. down. This is where the bite's taken out of this watermelon slice.
one right behind it. This tint of creme, alizarin crimson as well. And then I might move on to mauve for this one. Christine's question. Uh, she wanted, just wanted to know how they dry. If it's matte or shiny. Oh, these try satin. Kind of between. I'd say, yeah, yeah. They're not shiny and they're not matte. But there's just a nice middle ground. the other day she said um, she really loved the way they dry that's why she likes to use it the most is like the way it all looks finished yeah it is a very nice drying paint Notice to smell with the paints. Um, maybe I haven't sniffed them enough. <laughs> Not that anybody should be sniffing their paints, but I haven't really noticed a smell. Um, but I do love using different mediums with my um, acrylics. This one I don't usually because. Um, it's already as fluid as I would like it, and that's why I reach for it when I do, because that means I have a particular project that I want a high flow acrylic for. Um, what do you add to yours, Maggie? Because I know a lot of different people gravitate towards um, different mediums when they're working. We're going to go ahead and pull this one out. Oh, that could be it. <laughs> oh, okay. So you like that, the matte finish. Yeah, that's really the best way I feel to work. So once you start adding water and you lose the, the pigmentation and gets just really dilutes the product. Make this one over in the corner of mauve. Or, excuse me, crimson. Lizard and crimson. I got lost in my brain.
Yeah, I typically prefer a matte, but sometimes I do love super shiny. I'm talking like crazy shiny. Um, but it's only, only with certain pieces I've found. Not every, everything I feel like needs to be that shiny. It kind of just, sometimes I feel like it takes away from the painting itself. People are staring more at the, the shine and sheen than the artwork itself. These are the Lucas Krill. So these have a little bit of a satin finish. Yeah, these would be great for a sketchbook because they're not heavy. So that's a really good idea. Hey, Gypsy. Yeah, I want some watermelon now too. I didn't realize that this was gonna become torturous. Now my mouth is watering. to do when I'm working with chunks of color like this and because this is a pop art style make another little bit of a tint of my alizarin crimson here is I outline the edges of the shape and then go back and fill in so I can work a little bit faster with those with the safety net of the uh, lines along the outside. <laughs> I'm glad you got to uh, get a vacation in. share your sentiments about the sun. I go straight to burn. I do not tan. I do not collect $200 Pasco. Um, and I just did that. I just stuck my finger in the paint. Pro tip, don't, don't stick your finger where you just painted on your canvas. Um, yes, you can add, um, mediums to your acrylics. You don't have to um, select your paint based off of, um, you know, what uh, shine it's, or um, final appearance it's going to have. Um, there are lots of different ones if you want to have a matte look that you can add, if you want to have a shiny look that you can add. We also have those available. I 
and you just add those directly to your paint. And I will say I love these Centurion uh, linen canvases. Um, at the beginning of the show, I was talking about how I love that you can continue your image on each side. And it adds a lot of interest to your painting, as well as giving you the perk of not needing a frame. Yeah, the non-toxic part is also good if you're working in a, a small studio. Not everybody has the luxury of, you know, great ventilation. And sometimes you are, have to work in, <coughs> in small areas. So it's best to try to have as few toxic things that you work with as possible, if you can help it. Yes, Emmy is amazing. She is a beautiful, wonderful, lovely person and artist. So you get the whole package. I mean, you're not so bad yourself. Eh. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to talk about ourselves nice when we can talk about other people's nice. As my dad said, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> Even in regards to yourself. Now, everybody should feel good about their art. There's a meme I saw one time that was like, I've got a good heart, but this mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop myself sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it would be good to just be able to detach your mouth and leave it at home, you know, and like not yeah, I tell you how many times I just get into that open mouth insert foot and I just cannot dig myself out of it. Yeah. Been there. You're just trying and trying and then it makes it worse. And you're like, I... You have to be like, and I'm going to leave this conversation. Yeah, just stop and just walk away. Just crab walk out of the room.
Aw, thank you, Emmy. <laughs> oh yeah, I actually, good point, Gypsy. I should probably leave my eyes at home too. My eyes are very telling. I guess I should just be wearing sunglasses all the time then. One of my friends called me out one time and told me that I have this like head tilt that I have <laughs> I when just, shenanigans go on just, and he just feels me like thinking bless your heart at him when it happens <laughs> and then I have to be super aware. <laughs> so now you're really self-conscious about the head tilt thing. Yeah, when you said help, head tilt, I just suddenly went, huh? I realized that I do that. Like when they would look at lot. the camera in the, in the office, uh -huh. and you would just, like, their head would tilt just, like, enough. Jamie. Thank you. That color is making me want raspberries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so good. Raspberries sound good too. Any fruit right now sounds good. It's, it's, it's hot outside. It's gross. It is that time of year for sangria. Ooh. Okay, I think these other slices are going to be some form, some tent of mauve. darker than I would like. Oh yes, and there are several variations of Bless Your Heart, too. And that's when you know how bad it's gotten. When you it's the intonation. Yeah, that too. So once you start adding other things like, Bless Your Little Heart. Little. Yeah. That's done something there's no going back from. Your heart mug that you got me for Christmas a couple years ago on my desk. It holds all my pins. I'm so glad you held on to that. I love it. It it made me think of you. Between that and I almost bought one one time that says I might be wrong but I doubt it. <laughs> I'm like, those are my two me mugs. It's like I 
I love it. Just the, the sheer, sheer confidence, Amanda. golden as well. Um, if you, you say you've never tried these, I would definitely give these a try. If you like golden, I bet you'll like these. Honesty is the best policy, right, Brazen? Thank you, Emmy. It's gonna look like a mess until I get to doing the black lines. And that's okay that I just went outside my drawing because I'm just gonna go back over it with those black lines. went for the wrong color. And this is me on coffee.
And then I just need to do the sides of my watermelons and I can move on to the rind. You have about 13 minutes left. Yeah, I may have to post this on the uh, Facebook, Jerry's Facebook, once it's finished. Yes, we would love that. Also, I can't wait for the greens to go on there. I think it'll be a fun pop. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think we're going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. say I almost started with a teal background because of the donuts but then I was it's like no I'm gonna switch up can't do teal all the time It's pretty hot over here too, Brazen. It's, they say it's the, what? It's not the heat, it's the humidity. Truly. <laughs> they weren't wrong, whoever they is. When you walk outside and you just feel like you might be swimming. Yeah. gasping for air. I'm using this side of my finger just to help me steady my hand a bit. side of the sky. Oh, stuck my finger in the paint again. There we Also, I don't know if you've been outside, but it rained earlier, but the humidity level did not go down. <laughs> it made me so mad. No. I feel like, if anything, it just helped it, made it worse. Mother Nature was just like, here, have all the rain, have all the water. And now we need gills.
he was going to be sideways. I decided I want him facing forward. And that's another great thing about working with acrylics. Is if you don't like something, you can just cover it up. Try not to move out of the camera. We've got about five okay. Yeah, doing this will give you an appreciation for some of those pop art pieces that seem like they took no time at all because I just put down some flat colors. But it does take time to build those up. But it's worth it. Uh, I love Sharon. She is hilarious. Oh, thanks, Gypsy. I'm going to keep trekking with this once we're done here. Get it finished for you guys to see. Maybe break and go get some watermelon first. Mm -hmm. layer down for the watermelon 
slices, the fleshy bits. I think that's what you call it, the flesh of the watermelon. I think that's technical terms. Um, uh, to dip into, oh, we'll go ahead. We'll start with the fern and just do a little bit of it while you guys are here. Yeah, we'll post it in the um, Jerry's uh, Facebook group, so that way you can see where this went. on my brush. Okay. And we'll stop there for now. Unfortunately, I didn't get to finish the painting, but ultimately it's going to be in this style. So once I finish my flat colors, I'm going to go back in and do my solid black lines. Get that nice pop art look. But anyway, thank you so much, guys, for hanging out with me, and I look forward to seeing you on another studio hour.